Before this video starts, since I always gotta say something before a major video, I'm sorry that it took me so long to upload the video. That's cause ever since this like series started, I've been fighting with the flu. So throughout this entire process, I've just been sick, like right off the bat. So yeah, it's just been tough getting everything done. Uh, that's why it even took me so long to finish everything because the stuff that I had to do wasn't really that hard. But since I had the flu, it's just that everything took so much out of me. So that's why it just took like, days for me to finish everything with the flu and all i was out here in the heat i was out here in the rain in the cold everything yeah in three days florida was 90 degrees it was pouring rain and it was 50 degrees it makes no sense if i do sound a little boring or anything throughout the entire video just know it's because the whole time i had like the serious flu so just bear with me a little bit what is up you guys welcome to part two of the one jay-z swap video sorry about the wind noise it's like super windy outside and we're sort of racing against time and yeah, we gotta get this done a little bit quick. So what we did yesterday was we took the GE motor out of the IS and then we also took the one Jay-Z, removed the automatic transmission and we hooked up my manual W50A transmission on there. And yeah, so right now all we're gonna be doing is we are going to be hooking up the fuel return line. Plus I also got a fuel filter that I'm gonna be hooking up to it. And then after I have that done, we should be able to drop this engine inside the car. And then, yeah, we should be set. Just mount up everything and boom, that's it. But like I said, it's gonna be raining soon. So we sort of got to do this quick. So for the fuel line, I got this 10 foot wire that I bought from Amazon. So I'm gonna be using that. So the fuel return is this big hose right here. And then we're gonna follow that. And it comes all the way out to right here. And so that's where we're gonna hook up this hose. We're gonna cut about a feet of the hose so we can hook up the fuel filter. And then we're gonna hook up the other side of the hose to the other side of the fuel filter and then lead it all the way back to the fuel pump. We're gonna do about a foot length. So that's gonna be about to right here. So let's cut this line. All right, so we're gonna hook this up to here, like that. Yeah, I was thinking, put it on the other way. It does fit, okay, cool. Tied up like that. Then we're gonna take this clamp off of here. Sorry about the sniffling. I am sick. So am I. You don't that got me sick. And that's a lie. Now we're gonna hook it up. You just gonna let it dangle like that or? Yeah, it's gonna dangle like it's gonna dangle like this for now. So when we drop the engine in, we're gonna hook this up over here. Like that. The rest of this line is gonna head all the way back to the fuel pump. And then that's gonna be the fuel return line. Now, the only problem is when it comes to the fuel return line, with this fitting that I have, it's too big to fit inside this hose. So, you couldn't find a small one? So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to try to figure out something. Before we drop the engine in though, I'm gonna go ahead and just unbolt all these cut lines for the AC, uh, since it's gonna be harder for us to do it when the engine's in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt these now, and then when we get the engine in there, we can just hook up the ones that are in the engine bay right now. So I'll do that off camera. All right, you guys, so for the fuel return line, what I did is basically, as you know, you gotta remove the back seat to get to the where the fuel pump is. So basically you gotta take the line and you gotta shove it down here. And once you shove it down here, you gotta reach under the car and find where the line is. And then you're gonna pull the line down. And then when you pull the line down, you're gonna get it down then pull it all the way to the front of the car, come up here and the line is down there. We had it up but then it fell again. I got 10 feet and 10 feet is like plenty. So I think that would be like the perfect amount to get. But yeah, I think we're just about ready to put this baby on the hoist and then drop it inside the car. I think that's what we're about to do now. We're gonna slide the 1J onto the hoist and then we are going to drop it in. <laughs>
All right, you guys, so I, I know it's a little hard to see, but as you can see, we officially got the 1JZ sitting inside the engine bay. It took a lot longer than I wanted it to because I'm stupid and I forgot that the mounts, they're actually a little bit flexible. So they actually move around a little bit. And I was trying to move the whole engine when all I needed to do was just nudge the mounts so they could drop into the holes. So yeah, I took an L. I took an L on that part. But yeah, the engine is sitting inside the car. I just bolted up the cross member back on. I got the drive shaft on. What's so crazy is that we didn't even take off the drive shaft. <laughs> we just pulled it right out when we took the engine. So that's one way you can make your life a little bit easier. So the drive shaft is in, the cross member is bolted up. Now I'm just gonna do the two mounts on the bottom. And then after that, we should be good. But I'm not gonna end this video here. I'm actually gonna take it to tomorrow. We're gonna do the fuel pump. Yeah, that's all we have to do, just the fuel pump. And then we're gonna drop it off for it to get wired up. And we should be good. So then right now, I'm gonna cut it to tomorrow. So it is the next day. I'm still as sick as ever and I'm still tired as ever, but we're out here. Uh, so let me show you guys the engine since last night it was like super dark. Here it is right here. My 1JZ GTE VVTi officially inside the engine bay. I just came out here a few minutes ago. All I did was like basically just hook up the igniter right here. And I guess right now, all I have to do now is make sure all the coolant hoses are connected and then make sure like all of this stuff and that right there and yeah just make sure all the hoses are connected uh, i still have to do the bottom mounts got to get the power steering lines hooked up and i also got to get the ac lines hooked up as you guys can see the throttle body cable is way too short to reach where this is this is the old throttle body cable but yeah it's just way too short to reach so this morning i had my girlfriend take me to the junkyard and we actually picked up a throttle body cable out of a 1995 toyota camera this one is definitely long enough as you can see as you can see the bracket part's gonna be on the inside but even if look at how far it comes out and that's that's how far it comes out so that's gonna be plenty to go on here so that's just a little heads up for you guys doing the swap your is throttle cable will not work so if you don't want to pay for the super cables you could just go to the junkyard grab a cable off of a 1993 to 1996 camry it doesn't matter if it's the v6 or the or the four cylinder uh they're both fine so yeah just grab one of these and then you're all set all right so now that i'm in my working clothes we're gonna be doing a few things first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be bolting up the mounts at the bottom after that we're going to install the new throttle body cable and after that we're going to hook up the lines to the ac compressor and then i also have to figure out how i'm going to do the heater core bypass because i actually messed up and i should have bypassed it while it was outside of the car but it's inside the car now and i don't have the hoist anymore so yeah i sort of messed up but it's not too bad it's just going to be a little bit harder to get the hose to maneuver around all right, so I got the four bolts for the mounts right here. A huge shout out again to Greg for letting me borrow his impact. So this is gonna be pretty easy. It's gonna be a 17 millimeter for all four bolts. All right, so the bottom mounts are done. Now that that's over, I'm trying to hook up the two lines that go to the AC compressor. It's really hard to show you guys, but uh, before I dropped it in there, I actually covered it up. I actually plugged the holes with pieces of paper. I don't know if you guys can see the piece of paper. Sort of, yeah, sort of cramped in there, but I know you guys see that one sheet of paper, right? Yeah, right there, you guys see that one piece of sheet of paper? So yeah, I plugged the holes so nothing fell in them. Uh, and I know where the lines are. One of the lines is right here, that's for the top one, and then I also have one on the other side for the bottom one, but I think I'm going to have to hook it on through the bottom of the car. So I'm going to get those two lines on, and then we're going to move on to the next set. Alright, so we got both of the AC compressor lines hooked up, and I had to go in for the second one at least. I had to go in and use this huge extension because it was like a super cramped area, so I used this long extension, and I also used my swivel sockets. These have to be like one of the best investments I have ever made. Like these always come in handy. Now that I have that done, now it's time to install this new throttle cable. 
all right so to install the throttle body cable we have to remove those two bolts one right here one right there that's for the gas pedal and then there's also two bolts higher up that we have to remove also the two bolts that are at the top are actually these two bolts right here this one right there and that one right there and that's what's holding the throttle body that's the bracket i guess that's holding the throttle body cable so after i undo these two bolts on the inside and then the two bolts that's holding the bracket for the gas pedal then this line should come right out and then we could install this new one right here and if it's perfect so we're all good all right so i got the clutch pedal out so how it's set up on the inside is there's two bolts that are all the way up at the top that goes up here and then there's two bolts at the bottom for the gas pedal so basically you just unbolt the two at the top then unbolt these two at the bottom and then it comes loose and to take this off of the clutch pedal it just held by this plastic clip all you're gonna do is just squeeze the clip and then pop it up just like that boom now that's loose so this is the old one now this is the longer camry line and what we're gonna do is to basically the same way so we're gonna slide it right through this gap right here and then pop it in there and then boom it's ready now i'm just gonna pop this inside the car i'm gonna bolt it all up and then we should be good all right, now I have everything bolted up inside. So here's the throttle body cable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it over here, push it through right there, tighten this up. We're gonna take this, put it through here. And voila, throttle body cable hooked up. Now I'm gonna have my little brother go inside and put his foot on the gas pedal, but everything should be good. All right, put it all the way down. All the way. All right, as you can see, can't move anymore. So that's perfect length. Yeah, this is a little long, but I'll tuck that somewhere. So we don't gotta worry about that, but we're all good. All right, you guys, so what's the next day? Um, I hate these videos that go on forever because I feel like it's just annoying, man. I hate videos that just drag on for two, three, four days. But we're back at it with a 1J swap. So I think what you guys seen last was, I think I was doing the throttle body cable. I think that's what I got done. After that, Greg stopped by to um, look over everything. And we did some stuff like we finally got the, got the heater hose to come out from the other side it was actually stuck in there behind the engine so i actually went to advanced auto i bought a piece where i'm going to hook up a hose to that top port and then i got this little piece that's going to join the two hoses so the heater hose is going to come from right here and then go into that port right there and then the second one it is right down here i don't know if you guys could see that and then that's going to go to the bottom line the bottom hose which is right there while I was at Advance Auto, I also bought some hoses for the power steering line because this right here is so brittle, like it's freaking as hard as a rock. So this hose, uh, I might as well change it now since I'm in here. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I bought four feet of it. I'm probably going to only need two or three feet, but I bought four just to be safe. So I'm going to have to go under the car and disconnect this from the rack. And then I'm going to hook up the new hose and then we should be able to install my power steering reservoir. And I also got to go under the car to install the slave cylinder. But yeah, man, slowly but surely this build is going to get done. I sort of like working on it and piecing things together little by little. Uh, it's sort of fun when you're doing stuff to your own car. So, But yeah, those are the little tasks that I'm going to try to knock out now. All right, you guys, so I'm under the car right now. So I am assuming that the hose that's for the power steering is this one right here. So I got to go through the trouble of removing this freaking clamp. <laughs> and then I should be able to pull that hose out and then we can swap it in for the new one So let's see how long that takes me <laughs> Hooking up the hose was actually pretty easy um, Here's the hose right there. Like I said, I got four feet just to be you know a little extra just to be on the safe side So yeah, it comes to right up here. So then when Greg gets here, we're gonna see what we're gonna do with that And now what's next? Uh, 
I guess now, yeah, why not? Uh, let's just hook up the slave cylinder. All right, so we got the slave all hooked up. Uh, and I made sure that there weren't any unnecessary twists or bends while it's being routed down there. So now, since that's out the way, I guess next let's attack those heater hoses. Alright, so for the heater hose, I'm going to be using this right here. So basically, I'm going to take this hose and then I'm going to stick this through here. And then I'm going to join it with this hose right there. So it's just going to be going right across from here to this port right down there. Alright, so I got the heater hose connected using that brass piece. Um, I know I need to get a clamp here, but it's like right in my face so I won't forget. But this is pretty tight. I don't think this is coming loose anytime soon. But I'm just going to get a clamp for safe measures. I got the one down there connected and I need to grab a clamp for that one also. Alright, so now that we have that done, I think I'm going to attack the gas line that's at the bottom. But one issue that I ran into, it seems like the gas line is a little too short to reach where the banjo bolt is. First thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to undo the bracket so I could see if it could stretch a little bit more. And then if it does happen, then I should be able to get it to fit on. But if I can't get it to stretch out a little bit more, then I guess I'm gonna have to cut the line and do the same thing that I did with the heater hose using a brass tube to connect them both. That'll be the solution for that. But I'm gonna go down there and I'll check it out. So I just came back from Advanced Auto man it's like as the days go by i'm just getting sicker and sicker i guess it's not helping that i'm outside but i gotta get the swap finished um i just spoke to my wiring guy and i gotta get the whole front end and everything hooked up and put together by tonight so i can have it towed to get it wired tomorrow and after i tow it to get it wired tomorrow which is wednesday i'm gonna be picking it up thursday and well i'm not gonna pick it up i'm gonna tow it to the fab guy and he's gonna do the fabrication the intercooler piping and all that stuff i'm like legit dying like i'm feeling worse and worse every day i guess it like doesn't help that i'm outside working in the sun and then now i don't know if it's because i'm sick but i think it is a little cool outside but i feel freezing cold right now so yeah i'm like really putting in work out here but i gotta get this thing done so i just came from advanced auto let me show you what i got this is the line that i got and i'm going to be using for the for the uh, fuel line I only need about two or three inches, but hoses are cheap, so you know, why not just get a little extra? So at Advanced Auto, I actually also got these little fittings. So I'm gonna cut like two or three inches off of this hose, and then I'm gonna hook one fitting on this side, then I'm gonna hook another one on that side, so I could hook up both of the fuel lines. And I'm gonna clamp them down, even though this is like super tight, I'm just gonna add a clamp just to be safe. And then the fuel line should be able to reach, and the fuel line should be done. And then after that, all I have to worry about is the power steering. And then after I knock out the power steering, all I have to do is put the front end together, which is the condenser, the radiator, and all that good stuff. And then it's going to be ready to get towed. For the most part, I've been doing this like by myself, so it's pretty tough. Um, Greg has stopped by like quite a few times. Greg has stopped by to help me out and give me pointers, so I really appreciate that. Because without him, I would be pretty much lost. So here's the old fuel line, and we're going to be connecting it to this one right here. 2,000 years later. So I just came from Home Depot and I am out of it. Like, as you can see, I'm wearing a jacket now. Weather says that it's only like 72 degrees, but since I'm sick, I feel like it's like 50 degrees right now, so I'm freezing. I went to Home Depot to try to find a smaller fitting of this, but they didn't have any. All of them are the same size. This is on here super tight though, like this isn't going nowhere. So I'll probably just reinforce it with the clamp and then the hose that I got from Advanced Auto, it like slides right onto here, so that's good. So um, this is just temporary, I'm not gonna leave it like this. This is just for me to get it to wiring and then for him to be able to fire it up when the wiring is done. As you guys can see, it's a little dark outside so I'm not gonna be really able to film. So I'll cut this to the next morning when hopefully everything should be put back together and then the car should be getting picked up to go to wiring. All right, you guys, so it's the next day. Uh, last night I could have filmed because it was dark, but even if I wanted to, I still wouldn't be able to film because I was just out of it, bro. Like, I was so sick, it was ridiculous. Even talking right now, um, I don't know if it's my esophagus or like my windpipe. I don't know which one it is, but something in there is like swelling up. But I gotta finish this thing, man. I'm trying to get this thing either towed away today 
or tomorrow morning. So I just got to keep working, man. It just sucks that I'm working on this by myself because that thing would have, it would have been done a long time ago, but you know, it is what it is. I'm learning a lot from it, but yeah, even like talking right now, I'm forcing myself to talk, like my throat is killing me. So I just got to hurry up and get this done. As you guys can see this morning, right now it's like five o'clock. But when I woke up this morning, as you guys can see, I put in a little bit of work. So I got the radiator on, I got the condenser, got the radiator hose, and this other hose that I bought, it's not gonna work uh, because if I did install it right there near the lower radiator, it was sort of pinched, like there was sort of like a kink in it and that just would not work. So I actually ended up using the IS hose. And now for the power stand reservoir, the one that I got from Mishimoto is not gonna work. Uh, it's just the angles that they have the ports for each hose. It's just not gonna work So I actually hit up Tony and then Tony came through and I just went over there and I picked this up from him He actually made me sort of a custom bracket for it and the hoses are all in the right areas So it's gonna fit perfect uh, It's gonna sit Let's say I'm gonna unbolt one of the nuts for the strut and then that's where I'm gonna fit this on and then I'm just gonna bolt it down and that's where it's gonna sit, which I think is perfect. He actually did this super quick for me, man. I really appreciate it. IBT always coming through. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna be using for the power steer. And then after that, all I have to do is just hook up the fuel line. I'm still fighting with that fuel line because it's too short. Tony gave me a new line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put a torch to it and try to bend it to the angle that I need it to be. And then hopefully that'll work the next day all right you guys so i don't know exactly well first of all it's the next day now i don't know exactly where i left off yesterday but all i know is that yesterday i put the car back together like the front end and everything and then um i also got the power steering reservoir from tony because the one that i got from mishimoto is not gonna work so yeah i got the power steering reservoir from tony and i also got a new fuel line from tony also and then zane actually came out last night and he helped me out because physically i was like weak i was like drained zane came out and he lent me a hand and he helped me finish up everything and he also helped me clean up and stuff like that so shout out to zane for showing up last night but yeah man as you can see i'm in a car of course it's not my car because my car is actually right up there Yep, my car is on the tow truck right now. We are headed to JR Wiring Solution. That's the shop that's gonna be wiring my car. I actually heard of him from like Greg. Greg um, recommended me to him and I've heard nothing but good things about him. So, you know, why not? But yeah, man, that's where I'm headed now. Sorry I couldn't finish filming yesterday. Uh, like I said, I was just physically out of it. Like I was just done. Like this sickness is like really taking a toll on me. But we're headed over there right now. So I'll see if I can maybe film a little bit when I get over there. Wiring is gonna take about a day. So since I'm dropping it off this early in the morning, they're gonna probably get started on it right now. I should be able to pick it up tomorrow afternoon, I would say. And then after that, it's gonna go straight off to fabrication and we should be good. Okay, so right now it's actually present day. Uh, as we speak, my car is at the fab shop and uh, wiring was a success, but you're not gonna see that until next video. Uh, I know it's all messed up, but yeah, you know, just being sick just sucks. It just ruined everything. Everything took so much longer to do. But yeah, it's at the fab shop right now. Um, it's, it should be done Monday, Tuesday, around there. But I just can't wait for the car to be back. Feel like I haven't driven that car in a minute. But I actually drove it a little bit uh, while I was at the wiring shop so I could back it out and then pull it forward just to make sure that the tack works and to make sure that the speedo works also. But yeah, man, I can't wait to finally enjoy this car. This is my first boosted car, so I'm super excited. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys for the next one. I'm out. Coming slow, dreams they seem far. Here you won't make it from niggas who fell off. Goals they kept calling, so I had to pick up. If I wanna get paid, I gotta work hard, shine bright, day or night. HD vision right, homie. We ain't dropping no names, straight bombs, plus flame. That's the HD experience. Thinking that's a better vision is funny. Eddie Murphy delirious.